Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of this training. And in module four, we're going to be going over support and resistance. So what you'll learn is principles of support and resistance. What is support? What is resistance? And then I'll sh show you guys a few examples on TradingView, which is a platform that most traders use in order to do charting. Support occurs where a downtrend is expected to pause due to a concentration of demand whereas resistance occurs where uptrend is expected to pause due to the concentration of supply. So often a currency pair will climb to an area of resistance called the selling zone, where sellers perceive price has a great selling potential and is relatively overbought. The reverse is also true for a currency pair that drops to relatively low levels and where buyers perceive that there's great value at these levels to buy. So what is support? Price falls during a downtrend because there's an excess of supply over demand. The lower the price falls, the more appealing the price becomes for those wanting to buy the shares. Demand, which would have been gradually increasing, will eventually catch up to supply, and then price will stop falling. So if you look at the graph on the right, you can see that on the support, support line, you can see price has touched that a few times. So you, that zone there is called the d demand zone. So people are wanting to buy at those prices. And same as for resistance, which I'll explain in the next slide, prices, people are wanting to sell at those levels. So what is resistance? Resistance is the opposite of support. So price moves up because there's more demand than supply. And as price moves higher, there will come a point where the selling will overwhelm the desire to buy. And this happens for a number of reasons. So it could be that traders have determined that prices are too high, or, or they have met their targets. Or it could be if, if price goes up to a point where there was pre uh, previously um, selling pressure in the market, Resistance will occur there due to sellers coming into the market at those prices. So this is just an example. Um, so as you can see at the bottom there, so that's your demand zone, which is also your support zone. You can see here, price came down into the zone, pushed up, came back down into the zone. So it's retesting that previous um, zone that it's been at before. Came back up, retesting it again then pushing up so you can see there's a lot of buying pressure in this blue zone here so a lot of buyers are wanting to place orders at this at this zone to push the price up and then alternatively if you look at the supply zone the red zone you can see price comes up and then pushes down came up here broke it but it was it was a fake out so obviously sellers were buy there was more buying pressure here but then sellers actually pushed the price back down then came back into the zone and it's done it number of times so you can see this zone is obviously a zone where sellers are trying to push the price down so you can see this is in a, a range market so um, if you wanted to trade this market you would buy over here and then sell over here um, and it's relatively simple so you can see you wouldn't want to buy at the top here because there's more selling pressure there um, I'm gonna go to trading view now um, just to show you guys a few examples of the live charts um, and then yeah oh. so this is Bitcoin on the 4 hour chart and you can see that my levels are already drawn out but I'll explain why I drew these levels um, and then you guys I'm sure you'll get a better understanding once I've explained it so basically um, if you're looking at the 2 hour resistance this line here um, so this zone so you can see that price has come into this zone so let me just get this out so you can see over here, you see all these wicks. So there's a lot of movement within this zone here. You can see price came down, moved back up into the zone. See here, all these wicks. So you can see that's a valid resistance. So it was support over here and then turned into resistance. So you can see within this zone, there's a lot of movement. So a lot of sellers are trying to push the price down. So you can see sellers push the price down through here. Buyers bought at this um, support and pushed back up, up here and then sellers actually brought it back down. So this zone, um, there's a lot of selling pressure. And then also if you look at the volume over here, you can see price was actually pushed down by the volume. Um, so that's pretty much with resistance. If you go on um, a smaller time frame, so I'll just check the one hour, just to a clearer look. So you can see this zone, and there's a lot of selling pressure here. So you wouldn't want to buy at this zone just because of um, looking at the charts so you can see here 
amount of times there was a, a break of, um, from this zone. So price pushed down also here with the support zone. You can see here there's a lot of buying volume here. See with all this, this massive big candles. So buyers are wanting to push the price up at these levels and then sellers are trying to push the price down at these levels. Um, so that's just a general understanding. And then also you can get mid-range um, support and resistance. So over here, if you're looking at this line here, you can see price came down. If I actually need to extend this up a bit. Over there. Um, you can see here, so price came down into this zone. And there's a lot of activity here. So there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of liquidity. Um, and then you can see price came up came back down to the zone another place of so this is a support and a resistance zone so initially it was a support and then you can see over here how it turned into resistance so this middle it's like a middle of a range zone where price is struggling to break through so you can see here there's a lot of activity here so that's one two three four five six seven touches so even uh, yesterday price tried to break through this level but it couldn't so if there was a break through this level so a good way to look at this so if there was a strong strong candle closure you would wait for a retest so price to come back down to the zone and then you can look for longs but at the moment it's looking like the market is shifting to the downside because it's not breaking the zone so that's a good way to look at it if if there's a break a solid break through the zone um, then you would look for longs towards uh, another key level so you can see the next key level would be this two hour resistance because there's a lot of activity there um yeah i mean within this the, this area here so from here to here there isn't much besides this area so <coughs> excuse me um so i'll just explain the next part of this so you can see I've, I've drawn these uh, this line here from there to there. So I've drawn that because let me just get rid of these so it just looks cleaner. Sorry, let me just get rid of that. Okay. Um, So with this, you get horizontal support and resistance, and you also get vertical, I mean, um, diagonal support and resistance. So if I'm, if you're going on a higher time frame, this is, so when I do draw my, my lines, I normally go on a higher time frame, and then I go down, and then I um, modify them. So with this, I'm on the four hour, okay? So you can see that this level here is touched one, two three four times okay and you can see we, we broke through it but we're actually struggling at the moment so this is a good example of a diagonal resistance same as with the support we came into the zone we touched it again so the next level would to to break would be at the bottom here so at the moment what you should be looking at um, when drawing these lines, you need to go in higher time frames, identifying the trends. So you can see we're in downtrend. We haven't, we're making these. So this was a high, lower high, lower high. We didn't actually break that high. So we're still, we're still in a downtrend. Um, but on the, um, we're actually forming higher lows. So this is a good example of um, a triangle formation. So. If you're reading that PDF that I sent in the group, you must just go over that. There's a lot of charting um, ideas on there. Um, but in the next training, I'm actually going to explain all the different patterns and all of that. So you get a better understanding. So you can see that we are currently we're finding struggles within these, these zones. So over here, it's, tr it's struggling to break. So this is a good resistance zone. So if there was a clean breakthrough here, which there wasn't, then we'd look for longs. Um, so it's good to draw both these um, ver um, diagonal and horizontal levels so you can identify where price is going to go next.
So if you actually zoom in on a smaller time frame, it makes it just a bit cleaner. So you can see here. So here price, you can see this level, if you're drawing as a diagonal, it's struggling to break this level. And it this level actually lines up with this horizontal um, resistance. So that's also a good way um, it's it's better when two levels actually line up together because then you know it's valid um, and then also when you're drawing your um, diagonal trend lines you have to make sure that there's three points you have to make sure that there's three points so I'll just label that one one over here So that's one, two, and then three. So once you have three touches, then you know it's a valid trend line. So we have one touch here, two touch here, three touch here, and then you can see we broke here, coming down for retest, and now we're just kind of just um, consolidating a bit. So when drawing your trend line you have to make sure you get these three touches otherwise it's not valid um, and then also lucky enough with this trend line um, we actually have that horizontal support and resistance so you can see here this is another area where the resistance is being played out so you have this touch here this touch here this touch here and at these horizontal z zones so that's pretty much how you draw those lines um, so I just use this tool here um, and then I just draw my zones but let me just explain this in a better way so you understand it so if you're looking at this you can see that price came down okay came down to this level here the support zone came back up to the resistance zone came back down to the support zone up and you can see over here there wasn't much activity but buyers actually bought at these levels so if you wanted to draw a support level here, you actually could. Um, so it would be here. So you can see, if you're looking on smaller time frames, if you're looking at um, potential buyers on smaller time frames, you can see that price actually came down to this area and then came back up. Even over here, it's pushed up from this, this zone. So you can see buyers are trying to push the price up here as well. And then obviously, here another zone here and then here so when when charting um, it's, it kind of just depends on your preference so I normally draw all my lines on a four hour time frame just to show that um, well just because it, there's more um, confirmations and um, when you go in lower time frames there's a lot of um, a lot of um, confirmations but most of them aren't really true so the higher the time frame, the, the better when charting. Um, but yeah, obviously when you're doing short term tri time frame trades, um, you, you can actually draw these zones a bit better. So you can see that is a, a valid support level within a smaller zone. So at the moment, I mean, Bitcoin is kind of just consolidating a bit. Um, so you can see this is actually a valid zone here if you wanted to draw a zone so this is why how I draw my zone so we're on the 15 minute okay you can see here there's there's some buying buying pressure here buying pressure here and then you can see we break it come up retest selling pressure selling pressure so this is a valid zone here and you can see let me just identify all these touches so you just get a better understanding so you have over here one, two, three, four, um, and then there's a lot, lot of consolidation here. So there's the buyers and selling sellers are actually struggling to find uh, momentum on either side. So when there's consolidation, it just shows that um, the buyer, the buyers and the sellers are kind of equal. Um, no one's really winning the battle. If you have to look at it like that. Um, and then obviously here another another zone so this is a valid valid zone so what would happen here 
I mean, the next price to look at would be this zone here. So, if price had to come down, it would, it wouldn't, it would come down to this zone and then maybe consolidate and then go down or come down to this zone, consolidate and then come back up. So, whenever um, price goes to these zones, you won't s you won't see a clean break. There will be a lot of um, liquidity there, so um, buyers and sellers are trying to um, bite in order to um, get get the direction. So, like over here, I mean, it's it's very evident that that's a good support zone on a lower time frame. So, if you want to trade lower time frames, that would be a good place to actually get a buy order. Um, because you, you always want to buy on the support levels um, and then sell on the resistance. You never want to do, you never want to buy on a resistance level and then sell um, on a support level. But I mean, if, let's look at another scenario here. So if price comes down here, then we would want to, and we have a clean break, so we all this liquidity is gone, then we would want to wait for some type of um, retest so price comes down and normally wh whenever a level like this is broken um, you would get a retest so price would come back come back up to this level and then you would put a sell and then look for low levels um, so that's what I'll be looking at today um, yeah so I just did this recording today now because um, the recording actually got lost last night but yeah it's not a problem at all so I mean, if I had a look at this now, my plans, I mean, it's not really doing much. It's just consolidating. Um, I mean, this area is always a good area to buy at, but the volume at the moment is currently in favor of the, the bears. So you can see over here, the selling volume is actually increasing. And then, yeah, so that's pretty much all for support and resistance so you can see I mean looking on smaller time frames you get more touches so like I said at the top here um, let's wait for it to load you can see here so this resistance level so it was support so so support is where um, there's a lot of demand for um, that that type of price. So buyers want to buy at lower prices, obviously. Um, and then resistance, you would want to sell. So there's a lot of supply there. So sellers would want to sell at these prices. So uh, you can see like these levels, um, they happen pretty much every single time of, um, of the day. So price comes down there's a lot of struggle here, a lot of buyers and sellers um, fighting to get their direction. Comes back down, the buyers actually buy off here and then the sellers actually win. And then they come back down to this level here and you can see that price comes up, comes back down to this level and there's more buying volume. And you see how the volume at the bottom increases. So that's also a good way to um, see if there's going to be a bounce. So once there's a big, big volume spike, um, let's say over here so like you can see there's a massive volume spike here so you can see that the buyers are obviously out um, weighing the sellers so this level here I mean comes back down to this level and then also on that trend line um, yeah so also with trading you must also use volume it's a, just a good way to see um, who's actually winning the battle in terms of the, the bears um, or the bulls um, you can never be biased when trading um, because if you're biased then your emotions get the most of you so you just need to look at the chart and be like okay what's happening are we in an uptrend are we in a downtrend where are my levels um, if this gets broken this will happen you have to think logically um, and then you would actually start to get better at it um, yeah so what, uh, what I'll be waiting for today would be some type of push down so some type of push down here and then look for a bounce or something like this um, but I mean either could happen 
we just need to wait and see um, see what happens but yeah that's pretty much all the support and resistance um, yeah thanks so much for watching and in our next session on module 5 I'll be going over market structure and identifying trends see you guys there